and welcome to an art video. My name is Phyllis and I'm an art fan who makes fan videos about art. I'm a mostly self-taught artist who wants to learn as much about art as I possibly can. I was also very interested in video production, so I decided to combine the two and start making videos about art. I release these videos every other Saturday at noon. So consider subscribing to my channel for future content. Also, if you enjoy the video, hit that like button. Not only does it help this video be seen by other people, but it also gives me a sweet, sweet hit of dopamine. There are seven main elements of art, and out of all of them, my favorite is definitely color. As much as I love a beautifully rendered charcoal, graphite, or pen and ink drawing, the addition of color really breathes life into a piece of art. But how does the color get into the art? Well, that's a function of something that humans have been using for at least 44,000 years. Pigments. I love to think about the first artist. What inspired them to take a piece of charcoal and draw a simple representation of an animal or human on the wall of a cave when it had never been done before? Charcoal produces the pigment carbon black. If you've ever handled a piece of charcoal, then you know carbon black as it was left all over your fingers. Those primitive artists ground up colorful rocks and mixed them with spit or animal fat as binders. Those minerals became umber, yellow ochre, red ochre, and lime white, all of which are still in use to this day. As humans moved from prehistory to antiquity, society grew more sophisticated and so did the art. They needed more colors to better represent all the things they could create. The Egyptians in particular were very into color. They developed new methods of making pigments through plants, insects, and even chemistry. Egyptian blue was the world's first synthetic pigment. It was made by heating calcium compound, copper compound, and quartz or silica gel. It is a very stable pigment and is still pretty much true to the color that the ancient artists first applied. The Egyptians also invented the lake method of creating pigments by mixing dye with an inert binder such as a metallic salt. The main difference between dyes and pigments is that dyes are soluble and sink into the object that they're applied to, whereas pigments are insoluble and generally sit on the surface of the object that they're applied to. Minerals were also ground to create pigments, such as malachite, which is green, and its cousin azurite, which is blue. They used plants to make pigments, such as indigo and the gorgeous red matter lake. Another beautiful red that they invented was Carmine Lake, which is derived from insects. These pigments quickly became valuable items traded in Egypt and throughout the world, although through time, many artists have ground their own pigments. The Greeks and Romans discovered new minerals and new chemical processes and developed several new pigments. Some of these were toxic. Red lead, lead white, and vermilion were particularly poisonous, as was verdigris, a lovely shade of bluish green. Green earth was developed, which comes in many shades of green, and was used frequently in medieval art as an underpainting. In the medieval times, they also developed ultramarine, a dark blue, and lead yellow. All the pigments I have talked about so far in this video were used up until, and some past, some even until now, the Renaissance.
Egyptian blue disappeared after Roman times, and the formula was thought to be lost. However, Raphael seems to have rediscovered it during the Renaissance and used it in his painting, Triumph of Galatia. Today, we have the chemical formula to recreate this beautiful shade of blue. An entire video could be made about uh, Egyptian blue all by itself, but I'll spare y'all me droning on and on about one color for 13 minutes. Malachite also disappeared from use as a pigment around the 16th century. Several new pigments were invented during the Renaissance, and artists began mixing lifelike and stunning colors to create all the works of art we think of when we think Renaissance. Colors like Indian yellow, Van Dyke brown, and smalt made the scene. Smalt is a ground blue potassium glass containing cobalt that stopped being used around the 18th century. These pigments were mixed with some sort of binder to become a paint. Egg was frequently used to make tempera, or the more aptly called egg tempera. Many pigments were invented in the 17 and 1800s, and some are still being used to this day, except for toxic ones, like real emerald green, which was a beautiful color and cheap to make, but very poisonous. The fumes that came from painted bedroom walls killed many small children and it stopped being used in the early 1900s, which seems like it took them a while to stop using it, but it is what it is. Considered to be the first modern pigment, Prussian blue was invented when someone was experimenting with the oxidation of iron. Artists began using it in 1724, and it is still popular to this day. Chemistry in the 1800s brought many new colored pigments to the art scene. Metallic cadmium and cobalt were discovered. Cobalt was used to make my very favorite color blue, cerulean blue. A brilliant white was invented in 1921. Called titanium white, it is still in use to this day. As a matter of fact, I just bought a huge tube of titanium white acrylic paint to use with my own paintings. Today, many of the colors I've talked about still exist, but we make a ton of new colored pigments through chemistry. You can get different media like colored pencils or markers or acrylic paints in hundreds of colors. I really love color and I get excited by having a broad choice of colors to use, but art teachers will tell you it's best to limit your color palette and mix the colors you want yourself. That way you learn more about color theory but sometimes I want a revoltingly bright pink that I'm not sure I have the eye to mix myself. And there it is, I find it in colored pencil or marker form and I can't resist. All this begs the question, how does the color get into the pigment in the first place? Well, light contains all the colors of the rainbow. And when light hits a surface, some of the colors are absorbed. Other colors are reflected. They mix together and that becomes the color that we see. It's really all just a trick of the light. Well, that's a brief history of pigments bringing all sorts of color into our world. Color makes me very happy, and it will always be a feature of my artwork. More than detail, more than control, I want color to tell the story of my art.
Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. If you think about it, try to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Um, yes, I want that dopamine rush. <laughs> um, special thanks to my Patreon patrons. Um, your support means the world to me and it's helping me um, grow and develop what I'm doing here and even what I'm doing with my own artwork. Um, special thanks to Cat Scientist for the music I've been using in my videos. They're my favorite band. Unfortunately, they don't exist anymore and they only have one album. <laughs> uh, but I listen to it all the time and I love it, so I use it for my videos. Thank you guys very much for watching. I love you and I hope you have a great day. Five, six, seven, eight.